Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my September wrap up. There is still a week or a little less than a week left in September. Um, but like I've mentioned before, life's kind of just like up in the air <laughs> with what's going to happen over the next month or so. Um, so I figured I would just talk about some of the books that I've read recently. And so the first one is, move over so I can enter some pictures, The Possession by Michael Rutger. This is the second book in the Anomaly Files series. Um, so the first one was The Anomaly. Uh, I did a full review on that book last year. So I'll try to like link it down below or in the iCards. Um, so basically The Anomaly Files like within the series is a YouTube series and we're following like the director and the producer and like the team who puts together this YouTube channel and these videos and they go out in search of like strange things, think like the X-Files. Um, and in this one, they are starting to investigate these walls that are just like all over the world, like for no reason, basically. They don't know what they're from. They're different heights, different widths, just in the most random of places and no one knows like who built them and they appear to have been there for like an extremely long time. So that's the start of their investigation for this YouTube documentary that they're making um, and then they go to California in this small town that has these strange walls and while they're there they get mixed up in this investigation of a girl who recently went missing um, and then how that connects to these walls and what's weirdness and possible witchcraft and possession and stuff is going on in this town. Um, I enjoyed the first book in the series a lot more than this one. I gave this one a three out of five. This one was just too weird and yeah, it was just too too weird and too much going on. Um, I, I, it just wasn't for me, I guess. It, three out of five, I mean, it's still enjoyable. I still wanted to know what happened. It was just like not my kind of strange. Um, but I will definitely be reading the next one if there are more. I'm not sure like how many they're going to be in the series or whatever. The next book that I read I actually listened to on audiobook and that is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Uh, I gave this a four out of five. This is a non-fiction book but it totally reads like fiction. Um, but we're following three different women over about a decade of each of their lives um, and we're learning about like their sexual experiences and their sexual relationships and like the entire book itself is kind of about like women's desire and maybe like like the inequality of that I don't know if inequality is the right phrase to use but it's normal for a man to be sexual and to have wants um and desires whereas you know for you know nowadays it's better but it's still uh a lot of times looked down upon if a woman is sexual or open with her sexuality or is open about wanting to have sex and things like that so each of these women um, are in completely different situations um like they're either married or they're single or like in a relationship like things like that so they're completely different stories I thought it was really interesting um, I really did enjoy the audiobook and like I said it totally reads like a fiction novel um, I don't remember how long it was but I basically listened to it all in one day <laughs> um, just doing things around the house and playing video games um, it was it was really interesting and I think if you're into like I don't know if sexual health is even the right term I'm not doing this book justice but um, I've seen it get some pretty good reviews, so I would highly recommend it. The next book I read is a book that I haven't shut up about in the past like two years. I finally have it, and it's Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. Um, I have to say, I gave it a 5 out of 5, but a lot of that comes from my love of Nevernight and God's Grave, and my love of the series as a whole um, that kind of like amplified my rating of this book. Because in all reality, I probably would give it like a four. Um, the writing was still great. The humor was still great. The fighting, the violence, like all that stuff 
that I love about this outside of the plot was still fantastic. Like I still like the characters. Um, it didn't end the way I wanted it to. I felt that uh, Jay Kristoff, the only way I can phrase it is that he did something that kind of felt like a cop out to me and I didn't like that. Um, and the, uh, okay, I, like I'm not gonna spoil anything, but the way it ended, just wasn't what I wanted for the story, wasn't what I wanted for the characters. But the fact that I can be unhappy with the ending and their fates and yet still absolutely adore the series, I think really uh, says something about Kristoff and his writing and his storytelling abilities. Um, again, love the footnotes, the, the snarkiness, the characters. Um, I get, I teared up a little bit. I've seen a lot of people crying like hardcore, but like I kept it together. Um, but this is definitely a series that I'm going to revisit many times throughout my life. Probably one of my favorite fantasy series of all times. I, although, like I said, didn't end how I like, I would have liked it to. I am satisfied. The next book that I read is Dear Laura by Gemma Arm. Um, Amor? Amor? I can't speak. <laughs> uh, this is a horror novella. I read it on Kindle Unlimited. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Um, so we're following a young girl, Laura, when she is like 12, 13, 14 years old. Uh, her boyfriend is kidnapped. And like they don't find him. They don't know what happens. But moving forward every year for her birthday, she gets a letter and it basically... Uh, promises her if she does certain things for the writer of this letter then he will give her a clue as to where her boyfriend is but she can't tell the cops about it and she can't um, you know like tell anybody about it and the requests are super like dark and gruesome and like weird and uh, so basically she goes through this I want to say we're up until she's in her 40s is when we like meet her and she's going, she goes back, she tells a story about him being kidnapped. And so she's been going through this for a long time. Um, it, yeah, I can't say much else because it's a novella, but I really enjoyed it. I really liked her writing. Uh, she has a short story collection that I definitely plan on picking up, um, like soon. Like it'll probably be an October read. Um, I, I, yeah, I really liked her writing. I'm looking forward to more from her. And if you're in for a little like gross uh, horror novella for this time of year, I would recommend this one. The next book that I finished is The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. Um, this is like, I've seen this book a lot on Bookstagram and this was kind of like, just like a spur of the moment purchase when I was at Target one day. I adore the cover. It's pretty short, um, but in this it's like a, scary story coming of age type of book um and so you know that i love like the coming of age books um but we're following a young boy and basically the start of each chapter he's an adult he's currently a surgeon and he tells like a little story about like a surgery he's done or like a patient he's had and then it jumps back to when he was younger and he is in his small town and he makes two new friends, like a brother and a sister. And then he also spends a lot of time with his uncle who owns an oddity shop and he's like obsessed with the occult. So his uncle like gets these kids together um, and starts a Saturday night ghost club and he takes them to different places around town and tells them about um, like why this place is haunted or like what's, you know, the story behind this house or whatever. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I, this is like just my thing. I gave it a four out of five. It wasn't like the best book ever. Um, but the coming of age with the horror and the creepiness and like the, the ghost stories, it was a lot of fun. I definitely a good fall read. The next book that I finished is The Furies by Katie Lowe. Uh, this comes out in the US on October 8th. I believe it's been out in the UK for a while now. Um, but in this it is set at a boarding school in the 90s and there's a young girl who's found dead at the very beginning of the book um and then the rest of the story is following the events that lead up to her being found so our main character violet um that's who we're following through this whole thing she becomes a part of a small group of students who have like 
uh, like a little like club, like a educational club where they study like the history of the school, which has to do with some witchcraft. Um, and there is a story of a woman who was uh, sentenced to death and killed on the grounds for witchcraft like hundreds of years ago. And they also study a lot of Greek history. So you have like the mystery of the girl, you know, like you're leading up to her being found dead and what happens to her. Um, but it's, it's, I've seen this compared to the secret history. And although I haven't read the secret history, I can see why. Um, I don't want to say it's pretentious, but there is a lot of focus on being in the boarding school atmosphere, a lot of focus on like what the girls are studying and a lot of excerpts from Greek literature. So I think if you like that academia setting with like a little bit of mystery and you don't mind um, like Greek excerpts, not like in Greek, but like the text is there too, or there's a lot of discussion about the text that they're studying or talking about. I think you would like this. Um, I did the whole Greek history, Greek literature thing in college, and although enjoyable, this was, it just wasn't what I thought this would be. Um, it wasn't as much of a mystery as I expected. So if you want like mystery light, then this would be good for you. I gave it a three out of five. I wanted to know what happened. Um, and I did enjoy it, but yeah, three out of five. The next book that I finished was The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Finally, uh, I listened to this on audio. I listened to basically almost the entire series on audiobook. I gave this a two out of five. Uh, <laughs> can't say much about it. End of the series. I would say that I didn't like the ending and it was anticlimactic. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sure I might get some heat for that, but I just, it's not for me. One book left, the wind through the keyhole, and then I will be done. The next book that I finished is a young adult anthology, and it is His Hideous Heart. It's edited by Dahlia Adler. Um, this is 13 of Edgar Allan Poe's stories reimagined, like for modern day. Sorry about the glare. Um, so I ended up giving this a three out of five, which is usual for a collection of short stories because you know, sometimes it's just hard you can't connect to the characters or you're jumping around a lot um but there were some that i really really enjoyed in here and some that i was just like no this is not that they were bad it just wasn't my thing like technology or technological horror things of that sort i'm just not into um but what's cool about this book is you have the first the first half is the reimagined stories. And then the second half, they put like the original stories in there, which was really cool. Um, I didn't, my rating isn't based on the original stories. It's just based on the short stories. So I think if you like Poe, uh, you like anthologies, this would be a fun one to pick up for this time of year. Um, nothing super special to write home about. And since I'm such a huge Poe fan, I wanted to check this out. The next book that I finished is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is the story of Emily, who has recently moved in with her sister. She's helping to take care of her and her niece. Um, they were in a car accident, and her sister is kind of like laid up for a few months, like physical therapy and stuff. So she's kind of just there to run the household, help with appointments, help chauffeur her niece around, and things of that sort. Um, and her niece wants to be a part of this renaissance fair and to do that she has to have an adult uh, volunteer with her. So Emily ends up volunteering for this renaissance fair. She takes the um, role of a barmaid. I think they refer to it as a wench. And um, so the organizer of this fair, Simon, is like a dick to her at first or she's just like put off by his personality. Um, but then once they get into their roles for the fair and they have to like role play and whatnot, um, they develop like their characters develop like a relationship. So then that kind of like carries over and turns into more and there's not much else to say about it. I gave it a three out of five contemporary romance. I was looking for something quick and fun 
and easy to like get me out of my funk and uh it kind of it kind of did the job but um uh yeah i would recommend it it's it's pretty hyped on booktube i feel like so that's why i wanted to give it a shot and like the renaissance fair thing seems pretty cool i've never been to one but like now i want to go and check <laughs> one out one day um i don't i don't know if you guys ever been to anything like that let me know because it seems pretty cool so those are all the things that i read in september read recently uh, let me know if you've read any of them, what you thought of them. Let me know what you've been reading recently. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.